come back to the second derivative, and I'm going to look for the inflection points again. Which makes sense. Second derivative tells me about concavity. When you have a change in concavity, that means you have an inflection point in your original function. So, I already took the derivative for you twice. Twice. That, twice. that so is the second to, derivative. Yeah, you don't have to take the derivative. You're just going to use the second derivative of some unknown function to find the inflection points of the original function. All right. So, we have potential inflection points when the second derivative is zero or undefined. So let's look at that first. So when could this whole thing equal zero? Well, let's just set it equal to zero. Now, I could do algebra if I wanted to, or I could just think about it. Let's think about it let's, first. I like thinking about it. Let's think about it. What values of x could turn this I guess into zero? We just have to make the top zero, Ms. Stewart. That's what I'm thinking. It would just have to be zero. Sure. It would just have to be zero. Make it zero. Hey, but for you algebra mavens out there, I could put that over 1. Cross multiply. You get x times 1 is x. 0 times Hey, even the algebra gives me 0. OK. Yeah, that so, algebra stuff really works. <laughs> it's amazing. 0 is a potential inflection point. But there's more. Because remember, potential inflection points happen when the second derivative is undefined. So we look at the denominator. This is going to be undefined when the denominator is zero. Again, I could do some algebra, but let's just look there, people. What x value would produce a zero in the denominator? That's going to be a two. two. So two and zero are my potential inflection points. All right? Now, I keep saying potential because we have to do the test. We have to see if, in fact, they're inflection points and they're only inflection points if I go from positive. Uh, concavity. How about concavity. Con concave, concave up? up we can say positive down. concavity to negative that. concave. Yeah, that's. Or that's concave down to concave up. Right. All right. So here we go. I'm going to do my little number line. Number lines are so useful. They and, are. Uh, it's a good thing they invented them. Yes. That's, thank right. goodness. Yeah. Otherwise, numbers would just be in any order. They it's would just be, be floating all Very hard place. to keep track. All right. Give me a number that's less than zero. About negative one. Negative one. OK, so let's analyze the second derivative. Let's put negative one into the second derivative. And again, I just want to know if it's positive or negative. Negative one in the numerator, that gives me a negative up there. Negative one minus two, that's a negative square. Well, hold on, I'm squaring the denominator. So it's always going to be positive. I have a negative divided by a positive. Last time I checked, that's a negative. So that means I've got a concave down thing happening in my original function. Give me a number between 0 and 2. 1. Huh? I knew you were yeah, going to guess well, 1. Yeah. OK. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm putting 1 into my second derivative. I think we can agree that's positive in the numerator. Again, I'm squaring the denominator. I'm going to get something positive. Positive divided by positive is positive. Second derivative is positive, so my original function is concave. Up. Give me a number bigger than 2. 10. Ah. Yeah, so yeah, it's, uh, you thought I was going to say 3, right? I did. Yeah, right. OK. Taking the second derivative, analyzing the second derivative, when x is 10, we have a positive in the numerator, a positive in the denominator. Hey, that is still concave up. I'm just seeing one inflection point here, Mr. Haas. How about you? I agree. It's happening at zero. Terrific. So zero, when x is zero, that is your one and only one inflection point of your original function, whatever that may look like. Well, thanks, Ms. Stewart. Thank you.